Thank you very much uh, for inviting the Conference of Peripheral Maritime Regions in this uh, forum. I think I'm going to be speaking on what the um, Secretary General of BSEC has uh, told us a while ago, that it will be good to listen to the local actors. Don't know which local actors you were talking about, but I'm going to speak about my own, the local and regional authorities that we represent in the Conference of Peripheral Maritime Regions. And I'm going to speak also about the regional cooperation, so the, the subject area of our round table here, uh, regional cooperation integration based on the economic geography of the regions. We are born 50 years ago, old and mature at the same time. So the conference was born by the willingness of their members. So the regions of 14 countries, maritime countries, maritime regions, decided that they needed to put themselves together and create a space where their aspirations, needs, wishes, proposals would be actually being heard by the European institutions and beyond. Because our uh, conference is not only as part of the EU, is part of the larger area of the Council of Europe. We are shaped in a very peculiar way. It's quite unique in all the kind of associations of local and regional authorities in Europe. We are shaped in what we call geographical areas, geographical commissions. So we work on sea basins. And we have six of those. We have the North Sea, the Atlantic Sea, the Mediterranean Sea, the Balkans and the Black Sea, the islands, the Baltics. And we have created subgroups more specific task forces on the Adriatic and Ionian to follow the work of the European institutions and the work, of course, the stakeholders are doing, member states, regions, organizations, NGOs on that part of the world, and a task force on Arctic. So in all those geographical areas, we work with partners, we work with neighbors of Europe. So, because in all of these North Sea, you have the um, Norway, that's part of us, obviously. Scotland, in the Atlantic, we have the UK, now that's, of course, a neighbor, in the Mediterranean and in the, uh, in the Balkans and Black Sea as well. So, for us, this family is a good family, and it's a large family of people working together. So, the way we try to pass the messages across on all the policy areas we're working on is to see specifically how they address and they impact our partners in the sea basins. Because anything we talk about, territorial cohesion, maritime policy, name it, it's assessed differently from the, where you're based, and the territory, territory you're based. Huh? So we are working very much on all the policy areas affecting regions, from the territorial cohesion to the maritime development, to the maritime special planning, to the um, transport connectivity, to everything, social agenda, uh, migration you mentioned before, climate change for us, maritime regions, climate change is in my backyard. It's not something that's going to happen, it's something that's already happening. So how we address climate change with the raising of waters, with the extreme weather conditions, is something that we very much address. Not only in terms of mitigation, what to do when it comes, but also in terms of adaptation, how to prepare ourselves on that. And that is being addressed in all of our sea basing areas in a different way, but in a very complementary way as well. So we have this um, very beautiful uh, working activity which brings the local to the central, which is the general secretariat uh, implemented in Brussels, in, in Rennes, in France, and in Barcelona. We are going to become multinational in a moment, just based in different, in different places. And that's where we actually make our European proposals to the institutions. Because our strength is the way to work locally, to make proposals that they make sense to these people, to these regions, to these sea basins, to these neighbors, and bring those to the European institutions through the legislative proposals, the funding proposals, and even before these become in the European Parliament or in the uh, European Council a legislative discussion, when, before when the European Commission is actually going to make the proposal. So we are very much uh, ahead in whatever we try to propose because we really know the needs, we really know the problems, the issues, and we really try to make those heard, local, 
people, actors, to be heard at the European uh, institutions. And that's something that most of the times we have successfully uh, done, because when the legislation is coming, for instance, on uh, issues on transport accessibility, or how do you actually change your trans-European transport networks now to facilitate access through via Moldova and Ukraine. Because when the war started, we all of a sudden realized we needed so much to have better connectivity with Ukraine, which we don't have. So uh, this is a, a very simple kind of thing, but it's a very important kind of thing as well, because if we want any kind of food to come back to us, obviously it's going to be through the ports or through the railways through things that we need to actually elaborate into a program, into the trans-European transport network the European Commission is proposing. And that's something that we have influenced for that. So proposals that we have made, how the corridors will connect to facilitate this uh, accessibility, is something that we have worked for with, because we used to have, of course, members of Ukraine in our Balkan uh, and, and Black Sea um, organization, uh, commission, which unfortunately now are not there but we are still re-establishing a, a way to, to work with them. Now, in terms of, um, that's the way we structure ourselves, the way we work. Uh, in terms of policy areas, I mentioned already uh, the area of um, the um, maritime or the transport, trans-European network uh, activities that we are doing. We're working a lot on migration because, of course, for us, we, we are like the borders of Europe. If you see where we are located, the peripheral maritime regions, we are at the borders of Europe. So where, since 2015, we have had all this coming in from refugees in Syria when the war started, in, in, because we have this little crisis a little bit all over the place. Huh? So we are very used as regions to actually receive, so to be there to receive and integrate the refugees. So we have a vast experience on the subject. At the time when, there, in 2015, we had major problems of actually receiving people and making sure that these people are, are treated properly and they're giving in dignity that is being needed and security and everything, we had the possibility to receive 5,000 in two of our Spanish regions. And you know why we couldn't do that? Because regions that don't have competence on that subject. We had to have agreement from the member state of Spain to be able to receive these people, although the regions themselves, they had a bilateral agreement to make this happen. We, ha we wanted no money, no nothing. We had the ships ready, we had everything ready for this to happen. So sometimes we need to listen even more to the local or regional actors because they are, they are more open to these kinds of things. I, I don't know how you feel in your own, but I, I really feel the regions I'm working with are very open to this kind of receiving and making sure that in terms of humanitarian assistance or in terms of integration of people, in terms of using for workforce. I mean, in some of my areas, they're totally, they don't, in the north of Sweden, for instance, they don't have so many people, so they would be happy to actually receive. So it's, it's a way for, actually, it's a win-win situation, so they, they see it very practically. Uh, that's a, another subject area where practically we are doing uh, so much work. Now, uh, the other issue we are working on is maritime. Uh, obviously, we're the maritime regions of Europe. Uh, we have set up over the last uh, uh, mandates of the European Parliament, the last three mandates, so three times five years, uh, an intergroup. So our idea was that the maritime issues, they were not addressed in a transversal way. They were having fisheries activities, they were having a commission of fisheries in the European Parliament on transport, on whatever you want, but nothing on maritime as such. And for us, being the maritime regions, everything that addresses the sea is totally transversal. You know, it can, it can be about the fish, it can be about the food, it can be about this, the use of the space, it can be about the interrelation between the, the you know, the, what happens on the earth and what happens on the, on the sea. So it's so much that happens that is really interlinked. So we created, we create it. We, it's not for us to create, it's for us to actually being able to make it established, to help the establishment. So we convinced over 150 signatories of the European Parliament that they were happy to do that. And we have now for three consecutive mandates, and we hope to have it in the uh, 2024 uh, mandate when the European Parliament, of course, as you know, will be renewed, to have this intergroup which addresses maritime sector areas in all aspects of its, you know, of all sectors and all actors and all partners. And we have also private sector coming in, NGOs coming in, all of the MEPs, of course, European, com the commissioners are calling us to actually say, maybe we can use it to, to work together on one particular proposal we want to make. So it's a very good way to cooperate informally 
that on something that can be very formally approved afterwards in terms of legislation in the European uh, Parliament as, uh, you know, as a follow-up or as an initiative or as a proposal that could come from this particular uh, informal gathering. I believe a lot in these informal gatherings. That's why I agree 100%. And I, I mean, we are sector partners to you for some time. We have a memorandum of understanding together. I, I really think we should do a lot of things because a lot of things has been said and we can maybe structure ourselves a bit better to see how we can, we can help each other in, in developing, uh, the, in particular in these, in these times, which are not pleasant times. And we don't know how these times will end. So it's something that we definitely need to be working together on all sectors. We are regions, uh, but we also have very good relations with member states or with the European institutions, for sure. So it's something that we can definitely, and we do have a work on equality that the Basque countries is running. So what you said is something that we are dealing with on a very, very regular basis, and by all means, if we can have some sort of you know, cooperation in the task force when they are working, is probably something that could be, uh, that could be helpful for, for, for all of us. So I don't want to take too much of your time. A last word about what we do on Ukraine, because as I said before, uh, Ukraine has regions that they were members of ours, and we of course don't see them any longer. We have contacts with the different ambassadors in member states, and we create some contacts with those that are starting to be liberated now. And we are participating in, in one of the, it's, it's called the Ukraine Alliance. Um, it is all the associations of local authorities and regional authorities, uh, together with the European Committee of the Regions and also the Congress of the, uh, um, the Council of Europe. We work together to, to organize ourselves because my regions, they do it anyway. So they, they help in the humanitarian. They do bilateral uh, work with the, uh, with the regions in, in Ukraine. So what we try to do within this format is to actually coordinate the efforts for the reconstruction we're not going to build a hospital, but maybe we can help on the training, or we can help about you know, the um, uh, things that we can do on local democracy, that are things that we can actually help with. And we try to see the needs specifically uh, with the uh, Ukraine uh, regions, and obviously uh, we will uh, establish a coordination mechanism to whatever we are already doing so that we don't repeat ourselves. We are very much focusing on uh, helping during the winter time because uh, we're speaking about the 19 degrees in our, in our houses, but there they don't have houses and they don't have nothing. So <laughs> it's really important that we are actually helping and we will do that and we are doing this in a structured way uh, via this organization, again, an informal organization, but uh, definitely something that we all need to make sure that humanitarian aid and energy facility would be there to help these people in need. Crises are surrounding our area from the very beginning. Uh, we still need to work together now more than ever. So this is our opportunity in this forum and beyond to make sure that we have these bilateral discussions and find some specific ways uh, to actually do things happening on the ground. Not thousands of those, we can do three, four, but then we will do it properly. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.